My name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is a screencast to help you understand the concept of the equilibrium potential by comparing the electrical and chemical forces on each ion type at rest and at the peak of the action potential. This is the fourth and final installment of a four-part series of screencasts. In this installment, we look at how to symbolically draw the two forces, chemical and electrical, on different ions, both at rest and at the peak of the action potential. We have already covered potassium, and in this screencast we will look at sodium, calcium, and chloride. You will also learn why the electrochemical, or Nernst force, on a chloride can vary, which makes the electrochemical force on chloride a key regulator in cell physiology. Now we will compare the two forces on each ion type, at rest and at the peak of the action potential. When the cell membrane is at rest, the electrical potential is strongly negative. In fact, for most neurons and muscle cells, the electrical potential is about minus 80 millivolts at rest. In this diagram, the red arrow is the electrical force on a positive ion when there are more negative charges inside than out. As is always the case, there is more potassium ions inside the cell than outside. The blue arrow illustrates that on the basis of that, there is a chemical or diffusional force driving potassium out of the cell. The net force on potassium is the sum of the electrical and chemical forces. The net force is 90 millivolts outward minus 80 millivolts inward. So, when the membrane potential is at rest, the net force is outward and with a magnitude of 10 millivolts. The direction of the net force is in the same direction as the chemical gradient for potassium. During the action potential, the electrical force on potassium reverses because during the action potential, the membrane becomes positive inside. However, during the action potential, the chemical force does not change. The magnitude of the net force at the peak of the action potential is 90 millivolts outward plus 40 millivolts outward, which equals a total of 130 millivolts outward. During an action potential, the net force on potassium is always outward because the chemical force is always greater in magnitude than the electrical force. Thus, when potassium channels open, the membrane potential becomes more negative, which tends to prevent action potentials or to repolarize the membrane and then end action potentials that are already in progress. When potassium channels open, they reduce excitability, which is why potassium channel activity is considered a break on electrical excitability. By contrast, drugs that block potassium channels tend to make the cells more electrically active. For sodium ions, the chemical force pushes inward with a magnitude of 55 millivolts. At rest, the electrical force pushes sodium inward, but during the action potential, the electrical force pushes sodium outward. The net force on sodium is always inward because the outward electrical force is never larger in magnitude than the chemical force inward. Thus, sodium channel activity essentially drives cells to become more active. For calcium ions, the net force is always inward, again because the chemical force inward is always so strong. This means that calcium channel activity tends to depolarize the cell, and calcium channel blockers tend to reduce excitability. For chloride, things are different. First of all, chloride is a negative ion, so all the forces have the opposite sign. Officially, a force is positive when a positive ion is being pushed out of the cell. Equilibrium potentials have the reverse sign of the chemical force they represent because the equilibrium potential is meant to be equal and opposite. In this example, because the chemical gradient pushes chloride inward, the chemical force on chloride is positive even though the chloride is being pushed into the cell. When the cell is at rest, the net force on chloride in this example is 25 millivolts outward. So increased chloride channel activity would make the potential inside of the membrane more positive as the negatively charged chloride leaves the cell. During the action potential, the net force on chloride drives it inward. So chloride channel activity would make the cell more negative as the chloride ions are pushed into the cell. 
Thus, the direction of the net force on chloride depends on the transmembrane voltage. At rest, the net force on chloride is outward, while during the action potential, the net force on chloride is inward. Whenever chloride channels open, the membrane potential tends to be drawn toward the equilibrium potential of chloride. In a neuron, which has a chloride equilibrium of minus 65 millivolts, opening chloride channels will drive the membrane potential toward minus 65 millivolts, which results in these channels being inhibitory because the threshold potential for the action potential is around minus 55 millivolts, which is higher than the chloride equilibrium potential. Thank you for listening.